Hey guys, I'm going to answer a question that you've been asking about your Cybertruck's windshield and roof. Should you apply window film to it and tint it? Well, it's 86 degrees here in South Florida, Memorial Day weekend, and it's almost noon. So this would be a good time to take some measurements and check out a couple different film types and see what kind of improvements we're going to get out of this. My personal opinion, I wouldn't mess around with the windshield because it's laminated glass and coming from a background in window film, laminated glass is very fickle and it's subject to thermal stress fractures. And what that means is if you put a film on a window such as this windshield here, um, the way laminated glass is made, they have to cut the film and the glass um, and when they're cutting it, because there's two pieces of glass that are sandwiched together by a lamination, or it's a thin polyester film to make the glass bond together in the event that it breaks. Uh, so that lamination, when you're scoring the edges, you can have a microscopic chip or fracture that's hidden within the frame of the glass that you can't see and it can be very very tiny and when you add extra stress to a window like this the results can not be good so um, we're going to check this out we're going to take some measurements with the 3m window foam products that we use these are not the 3m auto tint products because we don't do any auto tinting but we do primarily commercial window film nationwide and some residential and the only difference between there's a little different adhesive in the auto tint version of the um, prestige it's actually called crystalline they're very similar in performance they use the same technology so with that being said i'm going to roll my cyber truck out of the garage into the sunny heat and then we're going to go uh, take some measurements okay now that i'm in the full sun you can see it's 86 degrees on the screen here so I am going to use a uh, solar transmission and power meter. Basically, in short, it gives you a, a ballpark of BTUs, which are British thermal units. That's how they measure um, the transference of heat through glass. Here is the solar energy BTU measure. It's at zero because it's not getting in the sun. So right here, if you can see this, I'm gonna try and zoom in. There's only 20 BTUs per square foot coming through. That is a great number in the window film industry. So when we're applying a film to the glass, if you can get it down to 20, that's amazing. So if you look right here, We've got right around 286, let's call it 280, 280 BTUs transmitting with no glass. And then let's see on the side, there is a slight tint, I can tell. The side windows are down to 43%, but that's on an angle. Now let's check the windshield out. The windshield has a lighter tint on it and it's down to 42. That is a really good number as far as reducing heat goes. Now, this is 3M Prestige 70, and there's probably a product similar to this in the windshield itself. That, that's my guess, just from looking at the film and knowing it. There is a little bit of a transition tint up here to help with glare. And then this line over here, if you are going to tint your windshield, you cannot go past that line. It's pretty much illegal. It is illegal in every state. So when people are tinting their windshields, there's a huge liability factor there. Um, I would not recommend tinting it for that. But you can see, we'll put the 70% up on the glass. It's not really going to change it. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, but legally it is illegal to do that let me try and i mean i think for our industry putting a 70 percent film on is not irresponsible but i would not do it for liability purposes 
And if you can see right here, check out the BTUs. It's it's gonna drop at about half. You know, I think we were at, so we're, we're getting 17 right now, 46% before. So you're gonna get some performance, but for the amount of money that you're gonna spend to tint it, and with the risk of breaking this window, which won't be covered by Tesla or the window film manufacturer, I don't know if it's worth the risk to really do that. You are cutting the BTUs in half, but again, most, most auto window tint, they don't work when the car is sitting. Now with Tesla, if you're running your air conditioning, it might help, but you really need the wind when your car is traveling to dissipate the BTUs because the, the, the auto window tint will absorb a lot of the solar energy in the glass and then the transfer of air flowing over the glass will pull those BTUs out of the film because it, it prevents it from actually transferring those BTUs into your cabin. So if your car is just sitting still, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I was driving this the other day and yeah, the sun was coming in at a weird angle and I had shorts on and my legs were hot. So um, it'd be up to you, but I don't see the risk in that. Now let's take a look again at the roof. The roof's at 21, which is what you're gonna get if you double up your windshield. Let's see if we put Prestige 70 on the roof and what it drops it down to. Again, that's a, it takes it down to three. So almost no solar energy is getting in on that roof. I mean, it, it, it's a trade-off. That on the roof is pretty much like this product here, 3M's P18. We can go out and look at the roof, but it's a silver reflective film. So if you were going to tint the roof and you put Prestige 70 on any or a silver film, not that you're going to put a silver film on this. I mean, there's no difference in the darkness that you... So I am going to go in the trunk and I'm going to show you what the back glass looks like and why you don't need to, to do that. So let's go back here. All right, you can see it's laminated glass right there i would not mess with this and you can see it's 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 pretty much a silver reflective film well thank you for watching this video i hope you found it helpful and informative because there's a lot of uncertainty out there on what you should do my ultimate recommendation is one, it's laminated glass. I would not mess with it. When we're dealing with insulated glass on commercial window film projects or residential, one in 4,000 windows will break when you install any type of window film on any type of glass. And the risk goes up significantly when you're dealing with laminated glass. And it goes up even more when you're dealing with architecturally shaped glass and the front windshield is definitely architecturally shaped with the curves. So um, not only have the curves in the corner, but you have probably a couple degrees of curvature. I'm not 100% sure, but along the edges, that's why people are saying that there's some distortion, but you get distortion with any automotive glass, but mine's pretty good, so I don't have any issues. Uh, should you tint the side windows? I would say yes, but you'd wanna make sure you stay within the legal limits that your state um, provides and you can check that out online our business is commercial window film nationwide and uh, you know I've been doing this for a long time probably installed our company that we own over 20 million square feet of window film and the history of it so this is just my honest opinion of what you should really consider about getting your windshield tinted I don't think you're going to pick up a huge amount of performance by putting a film on your windshield and your roof. So with that being said, I hope this helps a lot of people 
make a decision. Well, thanks again for watching. If you found this video informative, feel free to give us a like, subscribe to our channel.